Okay, good morning everyone. So I think this is going to be step one in a number of steps to try to ascertain how we go about monitoring uh, price increases on individual components. So I've taken a simple bill of materials here and I'm going to add some records into a table. So I've created a table here called uh, cost price changes and I'm going to put in the first component. That gives me the uh, current unit cost price that I'm, I'm paying for it based on um, the price list for the item. So we can confirm that if we just drill in very quickly, have a look at the product. Yep, that's what we're paying for it based on its uh, cost price. I'm not looking at the last purchase price in this instance, although if I check, they are the same, so that's okay. So in this instance, we're going to increase that. We'll just go 0 0.219, um, okay, so an increase and then we've put in an effective date so when is this going to when is this going to happen so we'll say the first of the first of uh, 20 and we update so if everything is up to date then um, we should see some impact on our um, our products so I have a query set up here uh, just calling it uh, under prices and calling it bomb price changes effect if we run that query it will give us a return of a uh, all bill of materials all finished products where we use this raw material. Um, so the raw material is obviously uh, something that's going to change based on our cost price changes table, uh, 7052. And then we're showing the old and new price, the effective date of that price change, all the products where it's it's used in the manufacture process, and then uh, the impact that's going to have. So we have a current uh, total. Um, so if we just focus on this one product for the moment, so this is 2140. And we have an overall price here of 171.46. We come down here and we find 2140. Sure enough, that confirms it's 171.46. And we're looking at an increase or a change then on that, um, bringing it to 152, which if we do the maths, obviously, is a negative. So we end up reducing the price. So how did that happen? Because we saw that we had a um, an increase based on the table, the uh, the cost price table there from the, uh, the old uh, purchase price list the challenge here is that when we look at the bill of materials itself we actually have a price here of uh, 0.25 because the last purchase price that's recorded on the system is outdated um, if we actually were to um to update that momentarily just go last purchase price we'll see that the actual current last purchase price is different to what the purchase price is that's recorded against the item so we have a dilemma there and we have to try to figure out what's the best approach there um so ignoring that for a second we are getting an impact here and we can see isolating for any one product so we'll ignore the uh, the fact that we have an inaccurate last purchase price on the bill of materials for the second and we'll just try another example to see what happens if we put in the other product so we'll just assume then for the moment that the um, the item is also going to increase in price And that'll happen on the 1st of um, February of 20. Now, in this instance, the last purchase price in the system is the 0.58. So that, that's going to give us a better example for this exercise. So we'll just run the bill of material price change effect again. We get a lot more items on the list now because uh, this time around it's bringing back um, both products, both the uh, 1150 and the 7052 and everything every product that they're used in the manufacturing of. And in this instance, then of course, uh, for the product that we're looking at, the 2140, uh, if we find it here, 2140, we have it there and we have uh, current price 171 is our total. The impact here will be um, small, but it will happen. Now, if we want to filter, then we can actually do a little filter and say, right, let's just find everything where it's used and we'll just go and we'll just pick out the uh, the 2140 in our case just to focus on that and now we can isolate for the two products the two components where their price changes are happening and from that we should be able to readily see then what the impact of each individual price change will be and if we wanted to we could subtotal that as well now the price changes are happening on different components at different points in the future but we can see the impact of each one individually um, so I think as a starting point, that's kind of giving us some useful information. 
Um, it's telling us overall what, what our price change will be. It's showing us a, at a line by line level or at an item by item level uh, where that impact will occur. So let's go with that and um, see how you guys get on with it. We'll talk again in a few days, hopefully.